Lviv Ukrainian Lviv L W I U listen Old East Slavic Lvihorod Polish Lwow L V U F listen Russian Lviv Romanized L V O V L V O F German Lemberg Latin Leopolis see also other names is the largest city in western Ukraine and the seventh largest city in the country overall with a population of 724713 as of January 2019. Lviv is one of the main cultural centers of Ukraine. Named in honor of Leo, the eldest son of Daniel, king of Ruthenia, it was the capital of the Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia also called the Kingdom of Ruthenia from 1272 to 1349, when it was conquered by King Casimir III the Great who then became known as the King of Poland and Ruthenia. From 1434, it was the regional capital of the Ruthenian Voivodeship in the Kingdom of Poland. In 1772, after the first partition of Poland, the city became the capital of the Habsburg Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria. In 1918, for a short time, it was the capital of the West Ukrainian People's Republic. Between the wars, the city was the center of the Lwów Voivodeship in the Second Polish Republic. After the German-Soviet invasion of Poland in 1939, Lviv became part of the Soviet Union, and in 1944-46 there was a population exchange between Poland and Soviet Ukraine. In 1991, it became part of the independent nation of Ukraine. Administratively, Lviv serves as the administrative center of Lviv Oblast and has the status of city of oblast significance. Lviv was the center of the historical regions of Red Ruthenia and Galicia. The historical heart of the city, with its old buildings and cobblestone streets, survived Soviet and German occupations during World War II largely unscathed. The city has many industries and institutions of higher education such as Lviv University and Lviv Polytechnic. Lviv is also the home of many cultural institutions, including a philharmonic orchestra and the Lviv Theatre of Opera and Ballet. The historic city centre is on the UNESCO World Heritage List. <laughs> <laughs> Names Besides its Ukrainian name, and its ancient Ukrainian name of Lvihorod, the city is also known by several other names in different languages, Polish, Lwow, German, Lemberg, Yiddish, Lemberg, or, Lemberic, Russian, Lvov Lvov, Hungarian, Ilivo, Serbo-Croatian, Lvov, Romanian, Leov, Latin, Leopolis meaning, Lion City. From ancient Greek, Leon Polis Crimean Tatar, Ilbav, see also other names. Topic Geography Lviv is located on the edge of the Rostokia upland, approximately 70 kilometers (43 miles) from the Polish border and 160 kilometers (99 miles) from the eastern Carpathian Mountains. The average altitude of Lviv is 296 meters (971 feet) above sea level. Its highest point is the Vysoki Zamok High Castle, 409 meters (1,342 feet) above sea level. This castle has a commanding view of the historic city center with its distinctive green domed churches and intricate architecture. The old walled city was at the foothills of the High Castle on the banks of the River Poltva. In the 13th century, the river was used to transport goods. In the early 20th century, the Poltva was covered over in areas where it flows through the city. The river flows directly beneath the central street of Lviv, Freedom Avenue, Prospect Svobody, and the Lviv Theatre of Opera and Ballet. Topic: <laughs> Climate. Lviv's climate is humid continental Köppen climate classification DFB with cold winters and mild summers. 
The average temperatures are 0 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit in January and 23 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit in July. The average annual rainfall is 745 mm with the maximum being in summer. Mean sunshine duration per year at Lviv is about 1,804 hours. Topic. History Archaeologists have demonstrated that the Lviv area was settled by the 5th century. The area between the Castle Hill and the river Poltva was continuously settled since the 9th century. The city of Lviv was founded by King Daniel of Galicia 1201, 1264 in the Principality of Halic of Kingdom of Rus backquote and named in honor of his son Lev as Levihorod which is consistent with name of other Ukrainian cities such as Merhorod, Sharhorod, Novorod, Bilhorod, Horodushchi, Horodok and many others. Lviv was invaded by the Mongols in 1261. Various sources relate the events which range from destruction of the castle through to a complete razing of the town. All the sources agree that it was on the orders of the Mongol general Burundi. The Shevchenko Scientific Society Nakov Tovarestvo im. Shevchenka informs that the order to raise the city was reduced by Burundi. The Galician Volhynian Chronicle states that in 1261 said Baranda to Vasilko, since you are at peace with me then raise all your castles. Basil Dimitrishin states that the order was implied to be the fortifications as a whole. If you wish to have peace with me, then destroy all fortifications of your towns. According to the Universal Lexicon der Gegenwart und Vergangenheit the town's founder was ordered to destroy the town himself. After King Daniel's death, King Lev rebuilt the town around the year 1270 at its present location, choosing Lviv as his residence, and made Lviv the capital of Galicia Volhynia. The city is first mentioned in the Halic Volhynian Chronicle regarding the events that were dated 1256. The town grew quickly due to an influx of Polish people from Krakow, Poland, after they had suffered a widespread famine there. Around 1280 Armenians lived in Galicia and were mainly based in Lviv where they had their own archbishop. In the 13th and early 14th centuries, Lviv was largely a wooden city, except for its several stone churches. Some of them, like the Church of St. Nicholas, have survived to this day, although in a thoroughly rebuilt form. The town was inherited by the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in 1340 and ruled by Voivode Dimitro Dedko, the favorite of the Lithuanian Prince Lubert, until 1349. Topic. Galicia Volhynia Wars During the wars over the succession of Galicia Volhynia Principality in 1339, King Casimir III of Poland undertook an expedition and conquered Lviv in 1340, burning down the old princely castle. Poland ultimately gained control over Lviv and the adjacent region in 1349. From then on, the population was subjected to attempts to both Polonize and Catholicize the population. The Lithuanians ravaged Lviv land in 1351 during the Halic Volyn Wars, with Lviv being plundered and destroyed by Prince Leubartas in 1353. Casimir built a new city center or founded a new town in a basin, surrounded it by walls, and replaced the wooden palace by Masonry Castle, one of the two built by him. The old Ruthenian settlement, after it had been rebuilt, became known as the Cracovian suburb. In 1356, Casimir brought in more Germans and within seven years granted the Magdeburg rights, which implied that all city matters were to be resolved by a council elected by the wealthy citizens. The city council seal of the 14th century stated, S. Agilum, Civitatis Lembviargensis. 
In 1358 the city became a seat of Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Lviv, which initiated spread of Latin Church onto the Ruthenian lands. After Casimir had died in 1370, he was succeeded as King of Poland by his nephew, King Louis I of Hungary, who in 1372 put Lviv together with the region of Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia under the administration of his relative Vladislaus II of Opol, Duke of Opol. When in 1387 Władysław retreated from the post of its governor, Galicia Volhynia became occupied by the Hungarians, but soon Jadwiga, the youngest daughter of Louis, but also ruler of Poland and wife of King of Poland Władysław II Jagiello, unified it directly with the crown of the Kingdom of Poland. Topic: <laughs> Kingdom of Poland In 1349, the Kingdom of Ruthenia with its capital Lviv was annexed by the crown of the Kingdom of Poland. The kingdom was transformed into the Ruthenian domain of the crown with capital in Lwów. On 17 June 1356 King Casimir III the Great granted it Magdeburg rights. In 1362, the high castle was completely rebuilt with stone replacing the previous made out of wood. The city's prosperity during the following centuries is owed to the trade privileges granted to it by Casimir, Queen Jadwiga and the subsequent Polish monarchs. Germans, Poles and Czechs formed the largest groups of newcomers. Most of the settlers were Polonized by the end of the 15th century, and the city became a Polish island surrounded by Orthodox Ruthenian population. In 1412, the local archdiocese has developed into the Roman Catholic metropolis, which since 1375 as diocese had been in Halic. The new metropolis included regional dioceses in Lwow, Lviv, Pashemishal, Chelm, Wolodzimierz, Luk, Kaminik, as well as Siret and Kajau see Old Cathedral of St. Sophia, Kiev. First Catholic Archbishop who resided in Lviv was Jan Zeszowski. In 1434, the Ruthenian domain of the crown was transformed into the Ruthenian voivodeship. In 1444, the city was granted the staple right, which resulted in its growing prosperity and wealth, as it became one of major trading centers on the merchant routes between Central Europe and Black Sea region. It was also transformed into one of the main fortresses of the kingdom, and was a royal city, like Krakow or Gdansk. During the 17th century, Lwów was the second largest city of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, with the population of about 30,000. In 1572, one of the first publishers of books in what is now Ukraine, Ivan Fedorov, a graduate of the University of Krakow, settled here for a brief period. The city became a significant center for Eastern Orthodoxy with the establishment of an Orthodox Brotherhood, a Greek Slavonic school and a printer which published the first full versions of the Bible in Church Slavonic in 1580. A Jesuit collegium was founded in 1608, and on 20 January 1661 King John II Casimir of Poland issued a decree granting it the honor of the academy and the title of the university. The 17th century brought invading armies of Swedes, Hungarians, Turks, Russians and Cossacks to its gates. In 1648 an army of Cossacks and Crimean Tatars besieged the town. They captured the high castle, murdering its defenders, but the city itself was not sacked due to the fact that the leader of the revolution Bodin Komelnitsky accepted a ransom of 250,000 ducats, and the Cossacks marched northwest towards Zamosk. It was one of two major cities in Poland which was not captured during the so-called deluge, the other one was Gdansk Danzig. At that time, Lwów witnessed a historic scene, as here King John II Casimir made his famous Lwów Oath. 
On 1 April 1656, during a Holy Mass in Lawau's Cathedral, conducted by the papal legate Pietro Vadoni, John Casimir in a grandiose and elaborate ceremony entrusted the Commonwealth under the Blessed Virgin Mary's protection, whom he announced as the Queen of the Polish Crown and other of his countries. He also swore to protect the kingdom's folk from any impositions and unjust bondage. Two years later, John Casimir, in honor of bravery of its residents, declared Lwów to be equal to two historic capitals of the Commonwealth, Krakow and Wilno. In the same year, 1658, Pope Alexander VII declared the city to be Semper Fidelis, in recognition of its key role in defending Europe and Roman Catholicism from Muslim invasion. In 1672 it was surrounded by the Ottomans who also failed to conquer it. Three years later, the Battle of Lwów 1675 took place near the city. Lwów was captured for the first time since the Middle Ages by a foreign army in 1704 when Swedish troops under King Charles XII entered the city after a short siege. The plague of the early 18th century caused the death of about 10,000 inhabitants, 40% of the city's population. Topic: <inaudible> Habsburg Empire. In 1772, following the first partition of Poland, the region was annexed by the Habsburg monarchy to the Austrian partition. Known in German as Lemberg, the city became the capital of the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria. Lemberg grew dramatically during 19th century, increasing in population from approximately 30,000 at the time of the Austrian annexation in 1772, to 196,000 by 1910 and to 212,000 three years later, while the poverty in Austrian Galicia was raging. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries a large influx of Austrians and German-speaking Czech bureaucrats gave the city a character that by the 1840s were quite Austrian, in its orderliness and in the appearance and popularity of Austrian coffeehouses. In 1773, the first newspaper in Lemberg, Gazette de Leopoli, began to be published. In 1784, a Latin-language university was opened with lectures in German, Polish and even Ruthenian. After closing again in 1805, it was reopened in 1817. By 1825 German became the sole language of instruction. During the 19th century, the Austrian administration attempted to Germanize the city's educational and governmental institutions. Many cultural organizations which did not have a pro-German orientation were closed. After the revolutions of 1848, the language of instruction at the university shifted from German to include Ukrainian and Polish. Around that time, a certain sociolect developed in the city known as the Lwów dialect. Considered to be a type of Polish dialect, it draws its roots from numerous other languages besides Polish. In 1853, street lighting was introduced Ignacy Lukasiewicz and Jan Zay. In that year kerosene lamps were introduced as street lights. Then in 1858, these were updated to gas lamps, and in 1900 to electric ones. After the so-called Ausgleich of February 1867, the Austrian Empire was reformed into a dualist Austria-Hungary and a slow yet steady process of liberalization of Austrian rule in Galicia started. From 1873, Galicia was de facto an autonomous province of Austria-Hungary with Polish and Ruthenian, as official languages. Germanization was halted and the censorship lifted as well. Galicia was subject to the Austrian part of the dual monarchy, but the Galician Sejm and provincial administration, both established in Lviv, had extensive privileges and prerogatives, especially in education, culture, and local affairs. The city started to grow rapidly, becoming the fourth largest in Austria-Hungary, according to the census of 1910. 
Many Belle Epoque public edifices and tenement houses were erected. The buildings from the Austrian period, such as the Lviv Theatre of Opera and Ballet built in the Viennese Neo Renaissance style, still dominate and characterize much of the center of the city. During Habsburg rule, Lviv became one of the most important Polish, Ukrainian, and Jewish cultural centers. In Lviv, according to the Austrian census of 1910, which listed religion and language, 51% of the city's population were Roman Catholics, 28% Jews, and 19% belonged to the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Linguistically, 86% of the city's population used the Polish language and 11% preferred the Ruthenian. At that time, Lviv was home to a number of renowned Polish language institutions, such as the Ossolineum, with the second largest collection of Polish books in the world, the Polish Academy of Arts, the National Museum since 1908, the Historical Museum of the City of Lwów since 1891, the Polish Copernicus Society of Naturalists, the Polish Historical Society, Lwów University, with Polish as the official language since 1881. The Lwów Scientific Society, the Lwów Art Gallery, the Polish Theatre, and the Polish Archdiocese. Furthermore, Lviv was the centre of a number of Polish independence organisations. In June 1908, Józef Pilsudski, Władysław Sikorski and Kazimierz Sosnikowski founded here the Union of Active Struggle. Two years later, the paramilitary organization, called the Rifleman's Association, was also founded in the city by Polish activists. At the same time, Lviv became the city where famous Ukrainian writers such as Ivan Franko, Pantelimon Kulish and Ivan Nechui Levitsky, published their work. It was a center of Ukrainian cultural revival. The city also housed the largest and most influential Ukrainian institutions in the world, including the Prosvita Society dedicated to spreading literacy in the Ukrainian language, the Shevchenko Scientific Society, the Dniester Insurance Company and base of the Ukrainian Cooperative Movement, and it served as the seat of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. Lviv was also a major center of Jewish culture, in particular as a center of the Yiddish language, and was the home of the world's first Yiddish language daily newspaper, the Lemberger Togblatt, established in 1904. <laughs> first World War In the Battle of Galicia at the early stages of the First World War, Lviv was captured by the Russian army in September 1914 following the Battle of Nila Lipa. The Lemberg Fortress fell on 3 September. The historian Paul Kellerman provided a first-hand account of the chaotic evacuation of the city by the Austro-Hungarian army and civilians alike. The town was retaken by Austria-Hungary in June the following year. Lviv and its population, therefore, suffered greatly during the First World War as many of the offensives were fought across its local geography causing significant collateral damage and disruption. <laughs> Polish-Ukrainian War After the collapse of the Habsburg monarchy at the end of the First World War Lviv became an arena of battle between the local Polish population and the Ukrainian Sich riflemen. Both nations perceived the city as an integral part of their new statehoods which at that time were forming in the former Austrian territories. On the night of 31 October to 1 November 1918 the Western Ukrainian People's Republic was proclaimed with Lviv as its capital. 2,300 Ukrainian soldiers from the Ukrainian Sich Riflemen which had previously been a corps in the Austrian army, took control over Lviv. The city's Polish majority opposed the Ukrainian declaration and began to fight against the Ukrainian troops. During this combat an important role was taken by young Polish city defenders called Lwów Eaglets. 
The Ukrainian forces withdrew outside Lwów's confines by 21 November 1918, after which elements of Polish soldiers began to loot and burn much of the Jewish and Ukrainian quarters of the city, killing approximately 340 civilians see, Lwów pogrom. The retreating Ukrainian forces besieged the city. The Sich riflemen reformed into the Ukrainian Galician Army UHA. The Polish forces aided from central Poland, including General Haller's Blue Army, equipped by the French, relieved the besieged city in May 1919 forcing the UHA to the east. Despite Entente mediation attempts to cease hostilities and reach a compromise between belligerents the Polish-Ukrainian war continued until July 1919 when the last UHA forces withdrew east of the River Zeebrook. The border on the River Zeebrook was confirmed at the Treaty of Warsaw, when in April 1920 Field Marshal Pilsudski signed an agreement with Simon Petlora where it was agreed that for military support against the Bolsheviks the Ukrainian People's Republic renounced its claims to the territories of eastern Galicia. In August 1920 Lviv was attacked by the Red Army under the command of Alexander Yegorov and Stalin during the Polish-Soviet War but the city repelled the attack. For the courage of its inhabitants Lviv was awarded the Virtuti Military Cross by Józef Pilsudski on the 22nd of November 1920. On 23 February 1921, the Council of the League of Nations declared that Galicia including the city lay outside the territory of Poland and that Poland did not have the mandate to establish administrative control in that country, and that Poland was merely the occupying military power of Galicia as a whole, whose sovereign remained the Allied powers and fate would be determined by the Council of Ambassadors at the League of Nations. On 14 March 1923, the Council of Ambassadors decided that Galicia would be incorporated into Poland, whereas it is recognized by Poland that ethnographical conditions necessitate an autonomous regime in the eastern part of Galicia. This proviso was never honored by the interwar Polish government. After 1923, Galicia was internationally recognized as part of the Polish state. Topic: Interbellum period. During the interwar period, Lwów held the rank of the Second Polish Republic's third most populous city, following Warsaw and Lodz, and it became the seat of the Lwów Voivodeship. Following Warsaw, Lwów was the second most important cultural and academic center of interwar Poland. For example, in 1920 Professor Rudolf Weigel of the Lwów University developed a vaccine against typhus fever. Furthermore, the geographic location of Lwów gave it an important role in stimulating international trade and fostering the city's and Poland's economic development. A major trade fair called Targi W. Shodny was established in 1921. In the academic year 1937-1938, there were 9,100 students attending five institutions of higher education, including the Lwów University as well as the Polytechnic, while about two-thirds of the city's inhabitants were Poles, some of whom speak the characteristic Lwów dialect. The eastern part of the Lwów Voivodeship had a relative Ukrainian majority in most of its rural areas. Although Polish authorities obliged themselves internationally to provide Eastern Galicia with an autonomy including a creation of a separate Ukrainian university in Lwów and even though in September 1922 adequate Polish Sejms bill was enacted, it was not fulfilled. The Polish government discontinued many Ukrainian schools which functioned during the Austrian rule, and closed down Ukrainian departments at the University of Lwów with the exception of one. Pre-war Lwów also had a large and thriving Jewish community, which constituted about a quarter of the population. 
Unlike in Austrian times, when the size and number of public parades or other cultural expressions corresponded to each cultural group's relative population, the Polish government emphasized the Polish nature of the city and limited public displays of Jewish and Ukrainian culture. Military parades and commemorations of battles at particular streets within the city, all celebrating the Polish forces who fought against the Ukrainians in 1918, became frequent, and in the 1930s a vast memorial monument and burial ground of Polish soldiers from that conflict was built in the city's Lechakiv Cemetery. Topic. World War II and the Soviet incorporation Germany invaded Poland on 1 September 1939 and by 14 September Lviv was completely encircled by German units. Subsequently, the Soviets invaded Poland on 17 September. On the 22 of September 1939 Lwów capitulated to the Red Army. The USSR annexed the eastern half of the Second Polish Republic with Ukrainian and Belarusian population. The city became the capital of the newly formed Lviv Oblast. The Soviets reopened unilingual Ukrainian schools, which were discontinued by the Polish government. The only change over imposed by the Soviets was the language of instruction, with the actual net loss of about 1,000 schools in short order. Ukrainian was made compulsory in the University of Lviv with almost all its books in Polish. It became thoroughly Ukrainized and renamed after Ukrainian writer Ivan Franko. The Polish academics were laid off. Soviet rule, wrote Tariq Cyril Amar, the paradox of Ukrainian Lviv turned out to be much more oppressive than Polish rule. The rich world of Ukrainian publications in Polish Lwów, for instance, was gone in Soviet Ukrainian Lviv, and with it, many journalism jobs. Topic. German occupation On the 22nd of June 1941, Nazi Germany and several of its allies invaded the USSR. In the initial stage of Operation Barbarossa, the 30th of June 1941, Lviv was taken by the Germans. The evacuating Soviets killed most of the prison population, with arriving Wehrmacht forces easily discovering evidence of the Soviet mass murders in the city committed by the NKVD and NKGB. Ukrainian nationalists, organized as a militia, and the civilian population were allowed to take revenge on the Jews and the Bolsheviks, and indulged in several mass killings in Lviv and the surrounding region, which resulted in the deaths estimated at between 4,000 and 10,000 Jews. On 30 June 1941 Yaroslav Stetsko proclaimed in Lviv the government of an independent Ukrainian state allied with Nazi Germany. This was done without pre-approval from the Germans and after 15 September 1941 the organizers were arrested. The sikorsky maisky Agreement signed in London on 30 July 1941 between Polish government in exile and USSR's government invalidated the September 1939 Soviet-German partition of Poland, as the Soviets declared it null and void. Meanwhile, German occupied Eastern Galicia at the beginning of August 1941 was incorporated into the general government as District Galician with Lviv as district's capital. German policy towards the Polish population in this area was as harsh as in the rest of the general government. Germans during the occupation of the city committed numerous atrocities, including the killing of Polish university professors in 1941. German Nazis viewed the Ukrainian Galicians, former inhabitants of Austrian crown land, as to some point more Aryanized and civilized than the Ukrainian population living in the territories belonging to the USSR before 1939. 
As a result, they escaped the full extent of German acts in comparison to Ukrainians who lived to the east. In the German occupied Soviet Ukraine turned into the Reichskommissariat Ukraine, according to the Third Reich's racial policies, local Jews then became the main target of German repressions in the region. Following German occupation, the Jewish population was concentrated in the Lwów ghetto established in the city's Zamrstinow today Zamarstinov district, and the Yanovska concentration camp was also set up. In 1931 there were 75,316 Yiddish-speaking inhabitants, but by 1941 approximately 100,000 Jews were present in Lviv. The majority of these Jews were either killed within the city or deported to Belzec extermination camp. In the summer of 1943, on the orders of Heinrich Himmler, SS Standartenfuhrer Paul Blobel was tasked with the destruction of any evidence of Nazi mass murders in the Lviv area. On 15 June Blobel, using forced laborers from Yanovska, dug up a number of mass graves and incinerated the remains. Later, on 19 November 1943, inmates at Yanovska staged an uprising and attempted a mass escape. A few succeeded, but most were recaptured and killed. The SS staff and their local auxiliaries then, at the time of the Yanovska camp's liquidation, murdered at least 6,000 more inmates, as well as the Jews in other forced labor camps in Galicia. By the end of the war, the Jewish population of the city was virtually eliminated, with only around 200 to 800 survivors remaining. <inaudible> <inaudible> Liberation from Nazis After the successful Lvov Sandomir's offensive of July 1944, the Soviet Third Guards Tank Army captured Lviv on 27 July 1944, with a significant cooperation from the local Polish resistance see, Lwów Uprising. Soon thereafter, the local commanders of Polish Army Krajowa were invited to a meeting with the commanders of the Red Army. During the meeting, they were arrested, as it turned out to be a trap set by the Soviet NKVD. Later, in the winter and spring of 1945, the local NKVD kept arresting and harassing Poles in Lviv, which according to Soviet sources on 1 October 1944 still had a clear Polish majority of 66.7% in an attempt to encourage their emigration from the city. Those arrested were released only after they had signed papers in which they agreed to emigrate to Poland, which post-war borders were to be shifted westwards in accordance with the Yalta Conference settlements. In Yalta, despite Polish objections, the Allied leaders, Joseph Stalin, Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill decided that Lviv should remain within the borders of the Soviet Union. On 16 August 1945, a border agreement was signed in Moscow between the government of the Soviet Union and the Provisional Government of National Unity installed by the Soviets in Poland. In the treaty, Polish authorities formally ceded pre-war eastern part of the country to the Soviet Union, agreeing to the Polish-Soviet border to be drawn according to the so-called Curzon Line. Consequently, the agreement was ratified on 5 February 1946. <inaudible> Post-war Soviet Union In February 1946, Lviv became a part of the Soviet Union. It is estimated that from 100,000 to 140,000 Poles were resettled from the city into the so-called recovered territories as a part of post-war population transfers, many of them to the area of newly acquired Wrocław, formerly the German city of Breslau. Little remains of Polish culture in Lviv. But Polish history and heritage is still visible. Many buildings in the old part of the city are great examples of Polish architecture, which flourished in Lviv after opening Technical School, later Polytechnic, the first higher education technical academy on Polish lands. Polytechnic educated generations of architects which were influential in the entire country. 
In Lviv the best examples of their work are, the main buildings of Lviv Polytechnic, University of Lviv, Lviv Opera, Lviv Railway Station, former building of Galicijska Kasa Oshchednashi, Pototsky Palace. During interwar period Lviv was striving to become a modern metropolis, so architects were experimenting with modernism. It was the period of the most rapid growth of the city, so one can find many examples of architecture from this time in the city. Great examples are main building of Lviv Academy of Commerce, the second Sprecher's building or building of city electrical facilities. The most visible monument of the Polish past is the Adam Mickiewicz monument at the square of his name. Many Polish pieces of arts, sculptures and paintings can be found in Lviv galleries, among them works of Jan Peter Norblin, Marcelleo Bacciarelli, Kazimierz Wojniakowski, Antoni Bradowski, Henryk Radikowski, Artur Grotger, Jan Modico, Aleksander Gierimski, Jan Stanislawski, Leon Wykszokowski, Józef Chelmonski, Józef Miofer, Stanislaw Wyspianski, Olga Biznanska, Władysław Slowinski. Jacek Malczewski. The Polish history of Lviv is still well remembered in Poland and those Poles who stayed in Lviv have formed their own organization the Association of Polish Culture of the Lviv Land. According to various estimates, Lviv lost between 80% and 90% of its pre-war population. Expulsion of the Polish population and the Holocaust together with migration from Ukrainian-speaking surrounding areas including forcibly resettled from the territories which, after the war, became part of the Polish People's Republic, from other parts of the Soviet Union, altered the ethnic composition of the city. Immigration from Russia and Russian-speaking regions of eastern Ukraine was encouraged. The prevalence of the Ukrainian-speaking population has led to the fact that under the conditions of Soviet Russification, Lviv became a major center of the dissident movement in Ukraine and played a key role in Ukraine's independence in 1991. In the 1950s and 1960s, the city significantly expanded both in population and size mostly due to the city's rapidly growing industrial base. Due to the fight of Smirsh with the guerrilla formations of the Ukrainian insurgent army the city obtained a nickname with a negative connotation of Banderstadt as the city of Stepan Bandera. The German suffix for city Stadt was added instead of the Russian grad to imply alienation. Over the years the residents of the city found this so ridiculous that even people not familiar with Bandera accepted it as a sarcasm in reference to the Soviet perception of Western Ukraine. In the period of liberalization from the Soviet system in the 1980s, the city became the center of political movements advocating Ukrainian independence from the USSR. By the time of the fall of the Soviet Union the name became a proud mark for the Lviv natives culminating in the creation of a local rock band under the name Klopt CZ Banderstatu Boys from Banderstat. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Independent Ukraine Citizens of Lviv strongly supported Viktor Yushchenko during the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election and played a key role in the Orange Revolution. Hundreds of thousands of people would gather in freezing temperatures to demonstrate for the Orange Camp. Acts of civil disobedience forced the head of the local police to resign and the local assembly issued a resolution refusing to accept the fraudulent first official results. Lviv remains today one of the main centers of Ukrainian culture and the origin of much of the nation's political class. In support of the Euromaidan movement, Lviv's executive committee declared itself independent of the rule of President Viktor Yanukovych on 19 February 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative division Lviv is divided into six rayons districts, each with its own administrative bodies. Halic district, Galiki Rajan Halitsky Rayon. 
Zalanitsia district, Zaliznichny Rajan Zaliznichny Rayan, literally, Railway Neighborhood. Lichakiv district, Likakiskij Rajan Lichakiski Rayan. Sihiv district, Sihiskij Rajan Sihivski Rayan. Franco district, Frankiskij Rajan Frankiski Rayan, named after Ivan Franco. Shevchenko district, Shevchenkiskij Rajan Shevchenkiski Rayan, named after Taras Shevchenko. Notable suburbs include Vinniki, Misto Vinniki Briuhavici, Salis Bruavici, and Rudni. Salis Rudni. Demographics Lviv residents live 75 years on average, and this age is seven years longer than the average age in Ukraine and eight years more than the world average 68 years. In 2010 the average life expectancy was 71 among men and 79.5 years among women. The fertility rates have been steadily increasing between 2001 and 2010, however, the effects of low fertility in the previous years remained noticeable even though the birth rates grew. There is an acute shortage of young people under the age of 25. In 2011, 13.7% of Lviv's population consisted of young people under 15 years and 17.6% of persons aged 60 years and over. Historical populations Year 1405, approximately 4,500 inhabitants in the old town, and additionally approximately 600 in the two suburbs. Year 1544, approximately 3,000 inhabitants in the old town number had decreased by about 30% due to the fire of 1527, and additionally approximately 2,700 in the suburbs. Year 1840, approximately 67,000 inhabitants, including 20,000 Jews. Year 1850, nearly 80,000 inhabitants together with the four suburbs, including more than 25,000 Jews. Year 1869 to 87,109 inhabitants, among them 46,252 Roman Catholics, 26,694 Jews, 12,406 members of the Greek Uniate Churches. Year 1892 127,943 inhabitants 64,102 male, 63,481 female, among them 67,280 Catholics, 36,130 Judaic, 21,876 members of the Greek Uniate Churches, 2,061 Protestants, 596 Orthodox and others. Year 1900 to 159,877 inhabitants, including the military, 10,326 men. Of these inhabitants, 82,597 were members of the Roman Catholic Church, 29,327 members of the Greek Uniate Churches, and 44,258 were Jews. As their language of communication, 120,634 used Polish, 20,409 German or Yiddish, and 15,159 Ukrainian. Year 1921 to 219,400 inhabitants, including 112,000 Poles, 76,000 Jews and 28,000 Ukrainians. Year 1939 to 340.000 inhabitants. Year 1940 to 500,000. July 1944 to 149,000. Year 1955 to 380,000. Year 2001 to 725,000 inhabitants, of whom 88% were Ukrainians, 9% Russians and 1% Poles. 
A further 200,000 people commuted daily from suburbs. Year 2007 to 735,000 inhabitants. By gender, 51.5% women, and 48.5% men. By place of birth, 56% born in Lviv, 19% born in Lviv Oblast, 11% born in East Ukraine, 7% born in the former republics of the USSR Russia 4%, 4% born in Poland, and 3% born in Western Ukraine, but not in the Lviv Oblast. Religious adherents, 2001 52% Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church 31% Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate 05% Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church 03% Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Moscow Patriarchate 03% Other Faiths in the year 2000, about 80% of Lviv's inhabitants were primarily Ukrainian-speaking. The ethnic Polish population Ethnic Poles and the Polish Jews began to settle in Lwów in considerable numbers already in 1349 after the city was conquered by King Casimir of the Piast dynasty. Lwów served as Poland's major cultural and economic center for several centuries, during the Polish Golden Age, and until the partitions of Poland perpetrated by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. In the Second Polish Republic, the Lwów Voivodeship inhabited by 2,789,000 people in 1921 grew to 3,126,300 inhabitants in ten years. As a result of World War II, Lviv was depolonized, mainly through Soviet-arranged population exchange in 1944-1946 but also by early deportations to Siberia. Those who remained on their own volition after the border shift became a small ethnic minority in Lviv. By 1959 Poles made up only 4% of the local population. Many families were mixed. During the Soviet decades only two Polish schools continued to function, 10 with 8 grades and 24 with 10 grades. In the 1980s the process of uniting groups into ethnic associations was allowed. In 1988 a Polish-language newspaper was permitted Gazeta Lwowska. The Polish population of the city continues to use the dialect of the Polish language known as Lwow dialect Polish, Gwara Lwowska. The Jewish population The first known Jews in Lviv date back to the 10th century. The oldest remaining Jewish tombstone dates back to 1348. Apart from the Rabbinite Jews there were many Karet who had settled in the city after coming from the east and from Byzantium. After Casimir III conquered Lviv in 1349 the Jewish citizens received many privileges equal to that of other citizens of Poland. Lviv had two separate Jewish quarters, one within the city walls and one outside on the outskirts of the city. Each had its separate synagogue, although they shared a cemetery, which was also used by the Crimean Karaiti community. Before 1939 there were 97 synagogues. Before the Holocaust about one-third of the city's population was made up of Jews more than 140,000 on the eve of World War II. This number swelled to about 240,000 by the end of 1940 as tens of thousands of Jews fled from the Nazi-occupied parts of Poland into the relative and temporary sanctuary of Soviet-occupied Poland including Lviv following the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact that divided Poland into Nazi and Soviet zones in 1939. Almost all these Jews were killed in the Holocaust. Meanwhile, the Nazis also destroyed the Jewish cemetery, which was subsequently paved over by the Soviets. After the war, a new Jewish population was formed from among the hundreds of thousands of Russians and Ukrainians that migrated to the city. 
The post-war Jewish population peaked at 30,000 in the 1970s. Currently, the Jewish population has shrunk considerably as a result of emigration mainly to Israel and the United States and, to a lesser degree, assimilation, and is estimated at 1,100. A number of organizations continue to be active. The Sholem Aleichem Jewish Culture Society in Lviv initiated the construction of a monument to the victims of the ghetto in 1988. On 23 August 1992, the memorial complex to the victims of the Lwau Ghetto was officially opened. During 2011-2012, some anti-Semitic acts against the memorial took place. On 20 March 2011, it was reported that the slogan, Death to the Jews, with a swastika was sprayed on the monument. On 21 March 2012, the memorial was vandalized by unknown individuals, in what seemed to be an anti-Semitic act. Economy Lviv is the most important business center of western Ukraine. As of 1 January 2011 until the economy the city has invested 837.1 million U.S. dollars, accounting for almost two-thirds of the total investments in the Lviv region. In 2015, the company of Lviv was involved $14.3 million. U.S. foreign direct investment, which, however, is two times less than a year earlier, $30.9 million in 2014. During January to September 2017 the general amount of direct foreign investment received by the local government in Lviv is $52.4 million. U.S. According to the Statistics Administration, foreign capital was invested by 31 countries here are some of the main investors, Poland 47.7%, Australia 11.3%, Cyprus—10.7% and the Netherlands. 6%. The total revenue of the city budget of Lviv for 2015 is set at about 3.81 billion Ukrainian hryvnias, which is 23% more than a year earlier, 2.91 billion Ukrainian hryvnias in 2014. As of 10 November 2017, the deputies of the Lviv City Council approved a budget in amount of 5.4 billion Ukrainian hryvnias, $204 million. The large part of which, 5.12 billion Ukrainian hryvnias, was the revenue of the fund of the Lviv. The average wage in Lviv in 2015 in the business sector amounted to 7,041 Ukrainian hryvnias, in the budget sphere 4,175 Ukrainian hryvnias. On 1 February 2014, registered unemployment was 0.6%. Lviv is one of the largest cities in Ukraine and is growing rapidly. According to the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine the monthly average salary in the Lviv is a little less than the average for Ukraine which in February 2013 was 2,765 Ukrainian hryvnias $345. According to the World Bank classification Lviv is a middle-income city. In September 2017, the average wage was amounted to 6,784 Ukrainian hryvnias, 230 euros, which is in 41.0% more than in a previous year. Lviv has 218 large industrial enterprises, more than 40 commercial banks, four exchanges, 13 investment companies, 80 insurance and 24 leasing companies, 77 audit firms, and almost 9,000 small ventures. For many years machinery building and electronics were leading industries in Lviv. The city-based public company Electron, trademark of national TV sets manufacturing, produces the 32 and 37 inches liquid crystal TV sets. The Electrontrans specializes in design and production of modern electric transport including trams, trolleybuses, electric buses, and spare parts. 
In 2013 Electrotrans JV started producing low-floor trams, the first Ukrainian 100% low-floor tramways. LAS is a bus manufacturing company in Lviv with its own rich history. Founded in 1945, LAS started bus production in the early 1950s. Innovative design ideas of Lviv engineers have become the world standard in bus manufacturing. The total volume of industrial production sold in 2015 amounted to 24.2 billion Ukrainian hryvnias, which is 39% more than a year earlier, 14.6 billion Ukrainian hryvnias in 2014. There are several banks based in Lviv, such as Credo Bank, Idea Bank, VS Bank, Oxy Bank, and Lviv Bank. Bank. None of these banks have bankrupted during the political and economic crisis of 2014 to 2016. It can be explained by the presence of the foreign capital in most of them. Lviv is a major business center between Warsaw and Kiev. According to the Lviv Economic Development Strategy, the main branches of the city's economy till 2025 should become tourism and information technologies it, the business services and logistics are also a priority. In addition, the Nestlé Service Center has located in Lviv. This center guides the company's divisions in 20 countries of Central and Eastern Europe. Also during 2016 the global service center Vimpelcom in Lviv was launched, which serves finance, procurement and HR operations in eight foreign branches of this company. Information technology Lviv is also one of the leaders of software export in Eastern Europe with expected sector growth of 20% by 2020. Over 15% of all IT specialists in Ukraine work in Lviv, with over 4,100 new IT graduates coming from local universities each year. About 2,500 tech lovers attended a major IT event in Lviv, about 20,000 IT specialists work in Lviv. In 2009, KPMG, one of the famous international auditing companies, included Lviv in top 30 cities with the greatest potential of information technology development. As of December 2015, there were 192 IT companies operating in the city, of which four large, with more than 400 employees, 16 average, 150 to 300 employees, 97 small, 10 to 110 employees, and 70 micro companies, 3 to 7 employees. From 2017 to 2018 the amount of IT companies raised to 317, the turnover of the Lviv's IT industry in 2015 amounted to $300 million U.S. About 50% of IT services are exported to the U.S., 37% to Europe, and the rest, to other countries. As of 2015, about 15,000 specialists were employed in this industry with the average salary of 28,000 Ukrainian hryvnias. According to a study of the economic effect of the Lviv IT market, which was conducted by Lviv IT Cluster and Sociological Agency, The Farm. There are 257 IT companies operating in Lviv in 2017, that employing about 17,000 specialists. The economic impact of the IT industry in Lviv is $734 million US. There are many restaurants and shops as well as street vendors of food, books, clothes, traditional cultural items and tourist gifts. Banking and money trading are an important part of the economy of Lviv with many banks and exchange offices throughout the city. Lviv Airlines has its head office on the grounds of Lviv Airport, but no longer operates any flights. Topic. Culture Lviv is one of the most important cultural centers of Ukraine. The city is known as a center of art, literature, music and theater. 
Nowadays, the indisputable evidence of the city cultural richness is a big number of theaters, concert halls, creative unions, and also the high number of many artistic activities more than 100 festivals annually, 60 museums, 10 theaters. Lviv's historic center has been on the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO World Heritage List since 1998. UNESCO gave the following reasons for its selection. Criterion 2, in its urban fabric and its architecture, Lviv is an outstanding example of the fusion of the architectural and artistic traditions of Central and Eastern Europe with those of Italy and Germany. Criterion V, the political and commercial role of Lviv attracted to it a number of ethnic groups with different cultural and religious traditions, who established separate yet interdependent communities within the city, evidence for which is still discernible in the modern town's landscape. Topic. Architecture Lviv's historic churches, buildings and relics date from the 13th century 18th century Polish rule. In recent centuries it was spared some of the invasions and wars that destroyed other Ukrainian cities. Its architecture reflects various European styles and periods. After the fires of 1527 and 1556 Lviv lost most of its Gothic-style buildings but it retains many buildings in Renaissance, Baroque and the Classic styles. There are works by artists of the Vienna Secession, Art Nouveau and Art Deco. The buildings have many stone sculptures and carvings, particularly on large doors, which are hundreds of years old. The remains of old churches dot the central cityscape. Some three to five story buildings have hidden inner courtyards and grottos in various states of repair. Some cemeteries are of interest, for example, the Lichakiski Cemetery where the Polish elite was buried for centuries. Leaving the central area the architectural style changes radically as Soviet-era high-rise blocks dominate. In the center of the city, the Soviet era is reflected mainly in a few modern-style national monuments and sculptures. Topic. Monuments Outdoor sculptures in the city commemorate many notable individuals and topics reflecting the rich and complex history of Lviv. There are monuments to Adam Mickiewicz, Ivan Franko, King Danilo, Taras Shevchenko, Ivan Fedorov, Solomia Krushelnitska, Ivan Pidkova, Mikhailo Hrushevsky, Pope John Paul II, Jan Kalinsky, Ivan Trush, St. George, Bartosz Glowacki, the Monument to the Virgin Mary, to Nikifor, the Good Soldier Sveik, Stepan Bandera, Leopold von Sacher Masik, and many others. During the interwar period there were monuments commemorating important figures of the history of Poland. Some of them were moved to the Polish recovered territories after World War II, like the monument to Aleksander Fredro which now is in Wrocław, the monument of King John III Sobieski which after 1945 was moved to Gdańsk, and the monument of Kornel Ujeski which is now in Szczecin. A book market takes place around the monument to Ivan F. E. Dorovich, a typographer in the 16th century who fled Moscow and found a new home in Lviv. New ideas came to Lviv during the Austro-Hungarian rule. In the 19th century, many publishing houses, newspapers and magazines were established. Among these was the Ossolinium which was one of the most important Polish scientific libraries. Most Polish language books and publications of the Ossolinium Library are still kept in a local Jesuit church. In 1997 the Polish government asked the Ukrainian government to return these documents to Poland. Subsequently, in 2003 Ukraine allowed access to these publications for the first time. In 2006 an office of the Ossolinium which now is located in Wrocław was opened in Lviv and began a process to scan all its documents. 
Works written in Lviv contributed to Austrian, Ukrainian, Yiddish, and Polish literature, with a multitude of translations. Religion Lviv is a city of religious variety. Religion 2012, Catholic, 57% Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church 56% and Roman Catholic Church 1% Orthodox, 32%, Protestantism, 2% Judaism, 0.1% Other Religion, 3% Indifferent to Religious Matters, 4% Atheism, 1.9% Christianity At one point, over 60 churches existed in the city. The largest Christian churches have existed in the city since the 13th century. There are three major Christian groups, the Ukrainian Catholic Archeparchy of Lviv, the Roman Catholics, and the Armenian Church. Each has had a diocesan seat in Lviv since the 16th century. At the end of the 16th century, the Orthodox community in Ukraine transferred their allegiance to the Pope in Rome and became the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. This bond was forcibly dissolved in 1946 by the Soviet authorities and the Roman Catholic community was forced out by the expulsion of the Polish population. Since 1989, religious life in Lviv has experienced a revival. Lviv is the seat of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Lviv, the center of the Roman Catholic Church in Ukraine and until 21 August 2005 was the center of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. About 35% of religious buildings belong to the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, 11.5% to the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church, 9% to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate and 6% to the Roman Catholic Church. Until 2005, Lviv was the only city with two Catholic cardinals, Lubomir Husser Byzantine Rite and Marian Jaworski Latin Rite. In June 2001, Pope John Paul II visited the Latin Cathedral, St. George's Cathedral and the Armenian Cathedral. <inaudible> <inaudible> Judaism Lviv historically had a large and active Jewish community and until 1941 at least 45 synagogues and prayer houses existed. Even in the 16th century, two separate communities existed. One lived in today's old town with the other in the Krakowski Pashedmieski. The Golden Rose Synagogue was built in Lviv in 1582. In the 19th century, a more differentiated community started to spread out. Liberal Jews sought more cultural assimilation and spoke German and Polish. On the other hand, Orthodox and Hasidic Jews tried to retain the old traditions. Between 1941 and 1944, the Germans in effect completely destroyed the centuries-old Jewish tradition of Lviv. Most synagogues were destroyed and the Jewish population forced first into a ghetto before being forcibly transported to concentration camps where they were murdered. Under the Soviet Union, synagogues remained closed and were used as warehouses or cinemas. Only since the fall of the Iron Curtain has the remainder of the Jewish community experienced a faint revival. Currently, the only functioning Orthodox Jewish synagogue in Lviv is the Bais Aharon v. Israel Synagogue. <laughs> Arts The range of artistic Lviv is impressive. On the one hand, it is the city of classical art. Lviv Opera and Lviv Philharmonic are places that can satisfy the demands of true appraisers of the classical arts. This is the city of one of the most distinguished sculptors in Europe, Johann Georg Pinzel, whose works can be seen on the facade of the St. George's Cathedral in Lviv and in the Pinzel Museum. 
This is also the city of Salomia Krushelnitska, who began her career as a singer of Lviv Opera and later became the prima donna of La Scala Opera in Milan. The Group Arts was a young movement founded in 1929. Many of the artists studied in Paris and traveled throughout Europe. They worked and experimented in different areas of modern art, futurism, cubism, new objectivity and surrealism. Cooperation took place between avant-garde musicians and authors. Altogether 13 exhibitions by Arts took place in Warsaw, Krakow, Lodz and Lviv. The German occupation put an end to this group. Otto Hahn was executed in 1942 in Lviv and Alexander Riemer was murdered in Auschwitz in 1943. Henrik Streng and Margit Reich Sielska were able to escape the Holocaust or Shoah. Most of the surviving members of ARTS lived in Poland after 1945. Only Margit Reich Sielska (1900–1980) and Roman Sielski (1903–1990) stayed in Soviet Lviv. For years the city was one of the most important cultural centers of Poland with such writers as Aleksander Fredro, Gabriela Zapolska, Leopold Staff, Maria Konopnicka and Jan Kosprowicz living in Lviv. Today Lviv is a city of fresh ideas and unusual characters. There are about 20 galleries, the DZYGA Gallery, ART Gallery, Primus. Gallery of the History of Ukrainian Military Uniforms, Gallery of Modern Art, Zelina Kanapa, and others. Lviv National Art Gallery is the largest museum of arts in Ukraine, with approximately 50,000 artworks, including paintings, sculptures and works of graphic art of Western and Eastern Europe, from the Middle Ages to modern days. Topic. Theater and opera In 1842 the Skarbek Theater was opened making it the third largest theater in Central Europe. In 1903 the Lviv National Opera House, which at that time was called the City Theater, was opened emulating the Vienna State Opera House. The house initially offered a changing repertoire such as classical dramas in German and Polish language, opera, operetta, comedy and theater. The opera house is named after the Ukrainian opera diva Salomea Krushelnitska who worked here. Nowadays Lviv Theater of Opera and Ballet has a large creative group of performers who strive to maintain traditions of Ukrainian opera and classical ballet. The theater is a well-organized creative body where over 500 people work towards a common goal. The repertoire includes 10 Ukrainian music compositions. It should be emphasized that no other similar theater in Ukraine has such a large number of Ukrainian productions. There are also many operas written by foreign composers, and most of these operas are performed in the original language, Othello, Ida, La Traviata, Nabucco, and A Masked Ball by G. Verdi, Tosca, La Boheme and Madame Butterfly by G. Puccini, Cavalleria Rusticana by P. Mascagni, and Pagliacci by R. Leoncavallo in Italian, Carmen by G. Bizet in French, The Haunted Manor by S. Moniusko in Polish. Topic: Museums and art galleries. Museum Pharmacy, PID Chornim Orlam, beneath the Black Eagle, was founded in 1735. It is the oldest pharmacy in Lviv. A museum related to pharmaceutical history was opened on the premises of the old pharmacy in 1966. The idea of creating such a museum had already come up in the 19th century. The Galician Association of Pharmacists was created in 1868. Members managed to assemble a small collection of exhibits, thus making the first step towards creating a new museum. Nowadays, the exhibition has expanded considerably, with 16 exhibit rooms and a general exhibition surface totaling 700 square meters. There are more than 3,000 exhibits in the museum. 
This is the only operating museum pharmacy in Ukraine and Europe. The most notable of the museums are Lviv National Museum which houses the National Gallery. Its collection includes more than 140,000 unique items. The museum takes special pride in presenting the largest and most complete collection of medieval sacral art of the 12th to 18th centuries, icons, manuscripts, rare ancient books, decoratively carved pieces of art, metal and plastic artworks, and fabrics embroidered with gold and silver. The museum also boasts a unique monument of Ukrainian Baroque style, the Bohorodchansky iconostasis. Exhibits include, ancient Ukrainian art from the 12th to 15th centuries, Ukrainian art from the 16th to 18th centuries, and Ukrainian art from the end of the 18th to the beginning of the 20th centuries. Topic. Music. Lviv has an active musical and cultural life. Apart from the Lviv Opera, it has symphony orchestras, chamber orchestras and the Trembita Chorus. Lviv has one of the most prominent music academies and music colleges in Ukraine, the Lviv Conservatory, and also has a factory for the manufacture of stringed musical instruments. Lviv has been the home of numerous composers such as Mozart's son Franz Xaver Wolfgang Mozart, Stanislav Ludkevich, Wojciech Kilar and Mikola Kalesa. Flute virtuoso and composer Albert Franz Doppler (1821–1883) was born and spent his formative years here, including flute lessons from his father. The classical pianist Mieczysław Horzowski (1892–1993) was born here. The opera diva Salomea Krzyzelnica called Lviv her home in the 1920s to 1930s. The classical violinist Adam Han Gorski was born here in 1940. Polish Radio Lwów was a Polish radio station that went on air on the 15th of January 1930. The program proved very popular in Poland. Classical music and entertainment was aired as well as lectures, readings, youth programs, news and liturgical services on Sunday. Popular throughout Poland was the comic Lwow Wave a cabaret review with musical pieces. Jewish artists contributed a great part to this artistic activity. Composers such as Henrik Wars, songwriters Emanuel S. Z. Lecter and Wiktor Bajinski, the actor Mieczysław Monderer and Adolf Fleischer, a Prekosenkranz und Untenbaum, worked in Lviv. The most notable stars of the shows were Henrik Vogelfanger and Kazimierz Vida who appeared together as the comic duo, Shipko and Tonko, and were similar to Laurel and Hardy. The Lviv Philharmonic is a major cultural center with its long history and traditions that complement the entire culture of Ukraine. Exactly from the stage of Lviv Philharmonic began their way to the great art world famous Ukrainian musicians, Ole Krysa, Alexander Slobodianik, Yuri Lysychenko, Maria Tchaikovska, also the musicians of New Generation, E. Chuprik, Y. Ehrman, Oksana Rapida, Oleksandr Kozarenko. Lviv Philharmonic is one of the leading concert institutions in Ukraine, which activities include various forms of promotion of the best examples of the music art, international festivals, cycles of concerts monographs, concerts with participation of young musicians, etc. The Chamber Orchestra, Lviv Virtuosos, was organized of the best Lviv musicians in 1994. The orchestra consists of 16 to 40 persons, it depends on programs, and in the repertoire are included the musical compositions from Bach, Corelli to modern Ukrainian and European composers. During the short time of its operation, the orchestra acquired the professional level of the best European standards. It is mentioned in more than 100 positive articles of the Ukrainian and foreign musical critics. Lviv is the hometown of the vocal formation, Pikardiska Tertsia, and Eurovision Song Contest 2004 winner Ruslana who has since become well known in Europe and the rest of the world. 
Picardieskaterzia was created on 24 September 1992 in Lviv, and has won many musical awards. It all began with a quartet performing ancient Ukrainian music from the 15th century, along with adaptations of traditional Ukrainian folk songs. Lviv Organ Hall is a place where classical music organ, symphonic, cameral, and art meet together. 50,000 visitors each year, dozens of musicians from all over the world. Lviv is also the hometown to one of the most successful and popular Ukrainian rock bands, Okean Elzy. Universities and academia Lviv University is one of the oldest in Central Europe and was founded as a Society of Jesus Jesuit school in 1608. Its prestige greatly increased through the work of philosopher Kazimierz Twardowski who was one of the founders of the Lwów Warsaw School of Logic. This school of thought set benchmarks for academic research and education in Poland. The Polish politician of the interbellum period Stanislaw Glebinski had served as Dean of the Law Department 1889-1890 and as the University Rector 1908-1909. In 1901 the city was the seat of the Lwów Scientific Society among whose members were major scientific figures. The most well-known were the mathematicians Stefan Banach, Julius Schauder and Stanislaw Ulam who were founders of the Lwów School of Mathematics turning Lviv in the 1930s into the world center of functional analysis, and whose share in Lviv academia was substantial. In 1852 in Dublany 5.0 miles from the outskirts of Lviv the Agricultural Academy was opened and was one of the first Polish agricultural colleges. The Academy was merged with the Lviv Polytechnic in 1919. Another important college of the interbellum period was the Academy of Foreign Trade in Lwów. In 1873 in Lviv was founded Shevchenko Scientific Society from the beginning it attracted the financial and intellectual support of writers and patrons of Ukrainian background. In 1893 due to the change in its statute, the Shevchenko Scientific Society was transformed into a real scholarly multidisciplinary academy of sciences. Under the presidency of the historian, Mikhailo Ryshevsky, it greatly expanded its activities, contributing to both the humanities and the physical sciences, law and medicine, but most specifically once again it was concentrated onto the Ukrainian studies. The Soviet Union annexed the eastern half of the Second Polish Republic including the city of Lwów which capitulated to the Red Army on of September 1939. Upon their occupation of Lviv, the Soviets dissolved the Shevchenko Society. Many of its members were arrested and either imprisoned or executed. Mathematics Lviv was the home of the Scottish Café, where in the 1930s and the early 1940s, Polish mathematicians from the Lwów School of Mathematics met and spent their afternoons discussing mathematical problems. Stanislaw Ulam who was later a participant in the Manhattan Project and the proposer of the teller ulam design of thermonuclear weapons, Stefan Banach one of the founders of functional analysis, Hugo Steinhaus, Karol Borsak, Kazimierz Kuratowski, Mark Kac and many other notable mathematicians would gather there. The café building now houses the Atlas Deluxe Hotel at 27 Teres Shevchenko Prospect pre-war Polish street name, Ulica Akademika. Mathematician Zygmunt Unishevsky died in Lviv on 3 January 1920. <laughs> Topic. Print and media Ever since the early 1990s, Lviv has been the spiritual home of the post-independence Ukrainian language publishing industry. 
Lviv Book Forum, International Publishers Forum is the biggest book fair in Ukraine. Lviv is the center of promotion of the Ukrainian Latin alphabet Latinka. The most popular newspapers in Lviv are Vysoki Zamok, Express, Lvivska Hazeta, Ratisha, Sabatna Pashta, quote, comma, quote, Hazeta po Lvivsky, quote, comma, quote, Post up and others. Popular magazines include Lviv Today, quote, comma, quote, Chetver, quote, comma, quote, Ria, and I, quote, dot, quote. Lviv Today is a Ukrainian English speaking magazine. Content includes information about business, advertisement, and entertainment spheres in Lviv, and the country in general. The Lviv Oblast Television Company transmits on Channel 12. There are three private television channels operating from Lviv Lux, NTA, and ZIK. There are 17 regional and all Ukrainian radio stations operating in the city. A number of information agencies exist in the city, such as ZIK, Zaksid.net. Gal Info, Lvivskij Portal, and others. Lviv is home to one of the oldest Polish language newspapers, Gazeta Lvovska, which was first published in 1811 and still exists in a bi weekly form. Among other publications were such titles as Courier Lwowski, associated with People's Movement, which existed from 1883 to 1935. Among the writers who cooperated with it were such renowned names as Eliza Ozheshkova, Jan Kosprovich, Bolesław Limanowski, Władysław Orkin as well as Ivan Franko. Slowo Lvovsky (1895–1939), a right-wing daily which cooperated with Władysław Raymond, Henryk Sienkiewicz, Kazimierz Tetmajer, Leopold Staff, Jerzy Zulawski and Gabriela Zapolska. Among its editors-in-chief was Stanislaw Grabski. In the early 20th century Slowo circulation was 20,000 and it was the first Polish newspaper to publish a serialization of Raymond's novel Klopi. After World War II Slowo was moved to Wrocław with first post-war issue published on 1 November 1946. Chervoni Satander, a Soviet daily published between 1939 and 1941, starting in the 20th century a new movement started with authors from Central Europe. In Lviv a small neo-romantic group of authors formed around the lyricist Shmuel Jankef Imber. Small print offices produced collections of modern poems and short stories and through emigration a large network was established. A second smaller group in the 1930s tried to create a connection between avant-garde art and Yiddish culture. Members of this group were Deborah Vogel, Rachel Auerbach and Rachel Korn. The Holocaust destroyed this movement with Deborah Vogel amongst many other Yiddish authors murdered by the Germans in the 1940s. Topic in cinema and literature The 2011 film In Darkness, Poland's entry in the 84th Academy Awards category for Best Foreign Film, is based on a true incident in Nazi-occupied Lviv Some of the Austrian road movie Blue Moon was shot in Lviv. Parts of the film and novel Everything is Illuminated take place in Lviv, Brian R. Banks' Muse and Messiah, The Life, Imagination and Legacy of Bruno Schultz 1892-1942 has several pages which discuss the history and cultural social life of the Lviv region. The book includes a CD-ROM with many old and new photographs and the first English map of nearby Drohobych. The book The Girl in the Green Sweater, A Life in Holocaust's Shadow by Christina Chiger takes place in Lviv. Large parts of 1997 film The Truce depicting Primo Levi's war experiences were shot in Lviv. Large portions of the film D'Artagnan and Three Musketeers were shot in central Lviv. 
The book The Lemberg Mosaic 2011 by Jakob Weiss describes Jewish Lviv Lemberg, L -W -O -W, L -V -O -V, during the period 1910-1943, focusing primarily on the Holocaust and related events. In the book and film The Shoes of the Fishermen the Metropolitan Archbishop of Lviv is released from a Soviet labor camp and later elected Pope. The 2015 film Varta 1 2015 film, a movie which demonstrates the search for a new cinema features among young Ukrainian directors. The film uses the radio talks of the automobile patrols of activists of Lviv during Euromaidan and it was made to create a better understanding of the nature of the revolution. The movie was shot and made in Lviv city. Topic. Parks Lviv architectural face is complemented and enriched with numerous parks, and public gardens. There are over 20 basic recreation park zones, three botanical gardens and 16 natural monuments. They offer a splendid chance to escape from city life or simply sit for a while among the trees, at a nice fountain or a lake. Each park has its individual character which reflects through various monuments and their individual history. Ivan Franco Park, is the oldest park in the city. Traces of that time may be found in 300-year-old oak and maple trees. Upon the abrogation of the Jesuit order in 1773 the territory became the town property. A well-known gardener Bajer arranged the territory in the landscape style, and most of the trees were planted within 1885-1890. Bowdoin Komelnitsky Culture and Recreation Park, is one of the best organized and modern green zones containing a concert and dance hall, stadium, the town of attractions, central stage, numerous cafes and restaurants. In the park there is a Ferris wheel. Stryaski Park, it is considered one of the most picturesque parks in the city. The park numbers over 200 species of trees and plants. It is well known for a vast collection of rare and valuable trees and bushes. At the main entrance gate, you will find a pond with swans. Zanezinya Park is an ideal site for cycling, skiing sports, and hiking. Public organizations favor conducting summer camps here ecological and educational, educational and cognitive. Shevchenkiski Hay, in the park there is an open-air museum of Ukrainian wooden architecture. High Castle Park, the park is situated on the highest city hill, 413 meters or 1,355 feet, and occupies the territory of 36 hectares, 89 acres, consisting of the lower terrace once called Knyaza Hora, Prince Mount, and the upper terrace with a television tower and artificial embankment. Zelizny Vody Park, the park originated from the former garden Zelizna Voda Iron Water, combining Snopkiska Street with Novi Lviv District. The park owes its name to the springs with high iron concentration. This beautiful park with ancient beech trees and numerous paths is a favorite place for many locals. Lichakiski Park, founded in 1892 and named after the surrounding suburbs. A botanic garden is situated on the park territory, founded in 1911 and occupying the territory of 18.5 hectares 45.7 acres. Topic. Sport Lviv was an important center for sport in Central Europe and is regarded as the birthplace of Polish football. Lviv is the Polish birthplace of other sports. In January 1905 the first Polish ice hockey match took place there and two years later the first ski jumping competition was organized in nearby Slavsko. In the same year, the first Polish basketball games were organized in Lviv's gymnasiums. In autumn 1887 a gymnasium by Lichakiv Street Pol, Ulika Lichakowska, held the first Polish track and field competition with such sports as the long jump and high jump. 
Lviv's athlete Władysław Ponerski represented Austria in the 1912 Olympic Games in Stockholm. On 9 July 1922 the first official rugby game in Poland took place at the stadium of Pogon Lwów in which the rugby team of Orzel Biali Lwów divided itself into two teams, the Reds and the Blacks. The referee of this game was a Frenchman by the name of Robineau. The first known official goal in a Polish football match was scored there on 14 July 1894 during the Lwów Krakow game. The goal was scored by Wolodzimierz Szymicki who represented the team of Lviv. In 1904 Kazimierz Hemmerling from Lviv published the first translation of the rules of football into Polish and another native of Lviv, Stanisław Polakowicz became the first officially recognized Polish referee in 1911 the year in which the first Polish football federation was founded in Lviv. The first Polish professional football club, Zarni Lwów opened here in 1903 and the first stadium, which belonged to Pogan, in 1913. Another club, Pogan Lwów, was four times football champion of Poland 1922, 1923, 1925 and 1926. In the late 1920s as many as four teams from the city played in the Polish Football League Pogan, Zarni, Hasmonia and Lechia. Hasmonia was the first Jewish football club in Poland. Several notable figures of Polish football came from the city including Kazimierz Gorski, Ryszard Konsowicz, Michal Matias and Wakla Kuczer. In the period 1900-1911 opened most famous football clubs in Lviv. Professor Ivan Boberski has based in the academic grammar school the first Ukrainian sports circle where schoolboys were engaged in track and field, football, boxing, hockey, skiing, tourism and sledge sports in 1906. He has organized the Ukrainian sports circle in 1908. Much its pupils in due course in 1911 have formed a sports society with the loud name, Ukraine. First Ukrainian football club of Lviv, Lviv now has several major professional football clubs and some smaller clubs. FC Karpaty Lviv, founded in 1963, plays in the first division of the Ukrainian Premier League. Sometimes citizens of Lviv assemble on the Central Street Freedom Avenue to watch and cheer during outdoor broadcasts of games. There are three major stadiums in Lviv. One of them is the Ukraina Stadium which is leased to FC Karpaty Lviv until 2018. Arena Lviv is a brand new football stadium that was an official venue for Euro 2012 championship games in Lviv. Construction work began on 20 November 2008 and was completed by October 2011. The opening ceremony took place on 29 October, with a vast theatrical production dedicated to the history of Lviv. Arena Lviv is currently playing host to Shakhtar Donetsk and Medellar Donetsk due to the ongoing war in Donbass. Lviv's chess school enjoys a good reputation, such notable grandmasters as Vasily Ivanchik, Leonid Stein, Alexander Belyovsky, Andrei Volokhytin used to live in Lviv. Lviv was originally bidding to host the 2022 Winter Olympics, but has withdrawn and will now most likely bid for the 2026 Winter Olympics. Topic. Tourism. Due to a comprehensive cultural program and tourism infrastructure having more than 8,000 hotel rooms, over 1,300 cafes and restaurants, free Wi-Fi zones in the city center, and good connection with many countries of the world, Lviv is considered one of Ukraine's major tourist destinations. 
The city had a 40% increase in tourist visits in the early 2010s, the highest rate in Europe. The most popular tourist attractions include the Old Town, and the Market Square Ukrainian, Plashtja Rynik, which is an 18,300 square meter 196,980 square foot square in the city center where the city hall is situated, as well as the Black House Ukrainian, Korna Kamyanitsia, Armenian Cathedral, the complex of the Dormition Church which is the main Orthodox Church in the city, the St. Peter and Paul Church of the Jesuit Order one of the largest churches in Lviv, along with the Kornecht Palace, now part of the Lviv History Museum, the Latin Cathedral of the Assumption of Mary, St. George's Cathedral of the Greek Catholic Church, the Dominican Church of Corpus Christi, Chapel of the Boim family, the Lviv High Castle Ukrainian, Vysaki Zamok on a hill overlooking the center of the city, the Union of Lublin Mound, the Lechekiski Cemetery where the notable people were buried, and the Svobody Prospect which is Lviv's Central Street. Other popular places include Lviv Theatre of Opera and Ballet, the Pototsky Palace, and the Bernardine Church. Topic popular culture The native residents of the city are jokingly known as the El Vivian Bashieri, someone who's mischievous. El Vivians are also well known for their way of speaking that was greatly influenced by the El Vivian Guara talk, Wesela Lwowska Fala Polish for Lwow's Merry Wave was a weekly radio program of the Polish radio LWOW with Szybko and Tonko, later starring in Bedzi Lepige and the Vagabonds. The Shoes of the Fisherman, both Morris L. West's novel and its 1968 film adaptation, had the titular pope as having been its former archbishop. Lviv has established many city feasts, such as coffee and chocolate feasts, cheese and wine holiday, the Feast of Pampic, the Day of Batyar, annual bread day and others. Over 50 festivals happen in Lviv, such as Leopolis Jazz Fest, an international jazz festival, the Leopolis Grand Prix, an international festival of vintage cars, international festival of academic music virtuosi, Stair Misto Rock Fest, medieval festival Lviv Legend, international Etnover Folklore Festival, initiated by UNESCO, international festival of visual art WizArt, international theatrical festival Golden Line. Lviv Lumens Fluorescent Art Festival, Festival of Contemporary Dramaturgy, International Contemporary Music Festival Contrasts, Lviv International Literary Festival, Kraina Mriy, Gastronomic Festival Lviv on a Plate, Organ Music Festival Diapazon, International Independent Film Festival Kinolev, International Festival Lviv Fest, and International Media Festival Mediadepo. Topic. Public transportation Historically, the first horse-drawn tramway lines in Lviv were inaugurated on 5 May 1880. An electric tram was introduced on 31 May 1894. The last horse-drawn line was transferred to electric traction in 1908. In 1922 the tramways were switched to driving on the right-hand side. After the annexation of the city by the Soviet Union, several lines were closed but most of the infrastructure was preserved. The tracks are narrow gauge, unusual for the Soviet Union, but explained by the fact that the system was built while the city was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and needed to run in narrow medieval streets in the center of town. The Lviv tramway system now runs about 220 cars on 75 kilometers 47 miles of track. Many tracks were reconstructed around 2006. The price in February 2019 of a tram trolleybus ticket was 5 Ukrainian hryvnias reduced fare ticket was 2 Ukrainian hryvnias and 50 kopekas, e.g. for students. The ticket may be purchased from the driver. After World War II the city grew rapidly due to evacuees returning from Russia, and the Soviet government's vigorous development of heavy industry. This included the transfer of entire factories from the Urals and others to the newly liberated territories of the USSR. 
The city centre tramway lines were replaced with trolleybuses on 27 November 1952. New lines were opened to the blocks of flats at the city outskirts. The network now runs about 100 trolleybuses, mostly of the 1980s Škoda 14TR and LAS 52522. In 2006, 2008, 11 modern low-floor trolleybuses, LAS E183, built by the Lviv Bus Factory, were purchased. The public bus network is represented by mini buses, so-called marshrutka, and large buses, mainly LAS and MAN. On the 1st of January 2013, the city had 52 public bus routes. The price is 7 Ukrainian hryvnias regardless of the distance traveled. The ticket may be purchased from the driver. Railways Modern Lviv remains a hub on which nine railways converge providing local and international services. Lviv Railway is one of the oldest in Ukraine. The first train arrived in Lviv on 4 November 1861. The main Lviv railway station, designed by Władysław Sadlowski, was built in 1904 and was considered one of the best in Europe from both the architectural and the technical aspects. In the interbellum period, Lviv known then as Lwow, was one of the most important hubs of the Polish state railways. The Lwow Junction consisted of four stations in mid-1939 main station Lwow Glowny now Ukrainian, Lviv Holovny, Lwow Kleparo now Lviv Kleparov, Lwow Lysakow now Lviv Lichakiv, and Lwow Podzams now Lviv Pidzomche. In August 1939 just before World War II, 73 trains departed daily from the main station including 56 local and 17 fast trains. Lwow was directly connected with all major centers of the Second Polish Republic as well as such cities as Berlin, Bucharest, and Budapest. Currently, several trains cross the nearby Polish-Ukrainian border mostly via Pashemyshal in Poland. There are good connections to Slovakia Kosis, and Hungary Budapest. Many routes have overnight trains with sleeping compartments. Lviv Railway is often called the main gateway from Ukraine to Europe although buses are often a cheaper and more convenient way of entering the Schengen countries. Lviv used to have a railbus, which has since been replaced with other means of public transport. It was a motor rail car that ran from the largest district of Lviv to one of the largest industrial zones going through the central railway station. It made seven trips a day and was meant to provide a faster and more comfortable connection between the remote urban districts. The price in February 2010 of a one-way single ride in the rail bus was one Ukrainian hryvnia and 50 kopekas. On 15 June 2010, the route was cancelled as unprofitable. <inaudible> Air transport Beginnings of aviation in Lviv reach back to 1884 when the Aeronautic Society was opened there. The Society issued its own magazine Astronauta but soon ceased to exist. In 1909 on the initiative of Edmund Lebansky the Awiata Society was founded. Among its members there was a group of professors and students of the Lviv Polytechnic, including Stefan Juicki and Zygmunt Sachaki. Awiata was the oldest Polish organization of this kind and it concentrated its activities mainly on exhibitions such as the first aviation exhibition which took place in 1910 and featured models of aircraft built by Lviv students. In 1913-1914 brothers Tadeusz and Władysław Floriansky built a two-seater aeroplane. When World War I broke out Austrian authorities confiscated it but did not manage to evacuate the plane in time and it was seized by the Russians who used the plane for intelligence purposes. The Floriansky brothers' plane was the first Polish-made aircraft. 
On 5 November 1918, a crew consisting of Stefan Bastier and Janusz de Bohrein carried out the first ever flight under the Polish flag taking off from Lviv's Luandowka now Ukrainian, Levendivka airport. In the interbellum period Lwów was a major center of gliding with a notable gliding school in Bezmichawa which opened in 1932. In the same year the Institute of Gliding Technology was opened in Lwów and was the second such institute in the world. In 1938 the first Polish aircraft exhibition took place in the city. The interwar Lwów was also a major center of the Polish Air Force with the 6th Air Regiment located there. The regiment was based at the Lwów Airport opened in 1924 in the suburb of Skinalo today Ukrainian, Skinilev. The airport is located 6 kilometers 4 miles from the city center. In 2012, after renovation, Lviv Airport got a new official name Lviv Danilo Halitsky International Airport LWO. A new terminal and other improvements worth under a $200 million has been done in preparation for the 2012 UEFA European Football Championship. The connection from airport to the city centre is maintained by bus number 48 and number 9. Topic. Bicycle lanes Cycling is a new but growing mode of transport in Lviv. In 2011 the city of Lviv ratified an ambitious nine-year program for the setup of cycling infrastructure, until the year 2019 an overall length of 270 kilometers 168 miles cycle lanes and tracks shall be realized. A working group formally organized within the city council, bringing together representatives of the city administration, members of planning and design institutes, local NGOs and other stakeholders. Events like the All-Ukrainian Bike Day or the European Mobility Week show the popularity of cycling among Lviv's citizens. By September 2011, 8 kilometers 5 miles of new cycling infrastructure had been built. It can be expected that until the end of the 2011 50 kilometers 31 miles will be ready for use. The cycling advisor in Lviv, the first such position in Ukraine, is supervising and pushing forward the execution of the cycling plan and coordinates with various people in the city. The development of cycling in Ukraine is currently hampered by outdated planning norms and the fact that most planners didn't yet plan and experience cycling infrastructure. The update of national legislation and training for planners is therefore necessary. In 2015, the first stations have been set up for a new bike sharing system Nextbike, the first of its kind in Ukraine. New bike lanes are also under construction, making Lviv the most bike-friendly city in the country. The city council plans to build an entire cycling infrastructure by 2020, with cycle lanes 268 kilometers or 167 miles and street bike hire services. Topic. Education. Lviv is an important education center of Ukraine. The city contains a total of 12 universities, 8 academies and a number of smaller schools of higher education. In addition, within Lviv, there is a total of 8 institutes of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine and more than 40 research institutes. These research institutes include the Center of Institute for Space Research, the Institute for Condensed Matter Physics, the Institute of Cell Biology, the National Institute of Strategic Studies, the Institute of Neuro-Mathematical Simulation in Power Engineering, and the Institute of Ecology of the Carpathians. In Soviet times, the city of Lviv was the location where the software for the Lunokhod program was developed. The technology for the Venera series probes and the first orbital shuttle Buran were also developed in Lviv. 
A considerable scientific potential is concentrated in the city, by the number of doctors of sciences, candidates of sciences, scientific organizations Lviv is the fourth city in Ukraine. Lviv is also known for ancient academic traditions, founded by the Assumption Brotherhood School and the Jesuit Collegium. Over 100,000 students annually study in more than 50 higher educational establishments. Educational level of residence Basic and complete secondary education, 10% Specialized secondary education, 25%. Incomplete higher education, undergraduates, 13%. Higher education, graduates, 51%. PhD. Postgraduates, about 1%. Topic. Universities. Ivan Franco National University of Lviv, UKR. Lvivskij Nacionalnij Universitet Ameni Ivana Franka Lviv Polytechnic, UKR. Nacionalnij Universitet. Lvivska Politechnika. Danilo Halitsky Lviv National Medical University, UKR. Lvivskij Nacionalnij Medichny Universitet IM. Danila Galikogo Lviv Stepanjitsky National University of Veterinary Medicine and Biotechnologies UKR. Lvivskij Nacionalnij Universitet Veterinarnoi Medicini ta Biotenologij Ameni Stepana Jizikogo National Forestry Engineering University of Ukraine UKR. Ukrainskij Nacionalnij Lysotenichny Universitet Ukrainian Catholic University UKR. Ukrainskij Kataliki Universitet. The Lviv National Academy of Arts, UKR. Lvivska Nacionalna Akademia Mystektivi Lviv National Agrarian University, UKR. Lvivskij Nacionalnij Agranij Universitet Lviv State University of Physical Training, UKR. Lvivskij Drzavnij Universitet Fiziknoi Kultori Lviv Academy of Commerce, UKR. Lvivska Komersijna Akademia Lviv State University of Life Safety, UKR. Lvivskij Drzavnij Universitet Bezpaki Zitdialnosti Lviv State University of Interior, UKR. Lvivskij Drzavnij Universitet Vnutrizni Sprav. Topic. Notable people. Topic. Writers and authors Sholem Aleichem, Jewish, Yiddish author and playwright Bodin Ihor Antonich, Ukrainian poet Mohamed Assad, writer Ivan Franko, Ukrainian writer, philosopher Alexander Fredro, Polish poet, playwright Uri Zvi Greenberg, Yiddish, Hebrew poet Zbigniew Herbert, Polish poet, writer Jan Kosprowicz, Polish writer, a foremost representative of Young Poland Maria Konopnicka, Polish poet, writer Kornel Mikazinski, Polish writer Stanislaw Lem, Polish writer Jan Perendowski, Polish writer Joseph Roth, Jewish writer Leopold von Sacher Masik, Austrian writer Pinches Sade, born Pinches Feldman, 1929 to 94, Polish born Jewish Israeli novelist and poet Markian Shashkovich, Ukrainian writer Leopold Staff, Polish modernist poet Vasil Stefanik, Ukrainian writer Irina Vild, 1907-1982, Ukrainian writer Deborah Vogel, 1902-1942, Jewish writer, poet Adam Zagajewski, Polish poet Simon Wiesenthal, Jewish author, Holocaust survivor and Nazi hunter Topic. Musicians and composers Emanuel Axe, pianist Yuri Bashmet, viola player 
Wojciech Babowski, Polish musician and dragoman in the Ottoman Empire, first translated the Bible into Ottoman Turkish. Albert Franz Doppler (1821–1883), flute virtuoso and composer. Volodymyr Ivajic, Ukrainian composer. Tadeusz Kasern, composer. Wojciech Kilar, Polish classical and film music composer. Filare Kalesa, Ukrainian ethnographer, composer. Ole Krysa, Ukrainian violinist, professor. Stanislav Ludkevich, Ukrainian composer. Karol Mikuli (1819–1897), Polish pianist, Chopin student. Gabriela Moisevich, Polish composer, pianist. Franz Xavier Mozart, composer. Moris Rosenthal (1862–1946), Jewish pianist, composer. Miroslav Skorik, Ukrainian composer. Topic. Philosophers, scholars, and doctors Stefan Banach, Polish mathematician Martin Buber, Austrian-born Jewish-Israeli philosopher Solomon Buber 1827-1906, Jewish banker, writer, philosopher Julian J. Busgong, Polish mathematician Benedict Dabowski, Polish naturalist and physician Ludwig Fleck, Polish medical doctor and biologist Maurice Goldhaber, physicist Ivan Kripiakevich, Ukrainian historian, academic, professor of Lviv University Ludwig von Mises, Jewish-American economist Jakub Parnas, Jewish biochemist Faina Petriakova, Ukrainian ethnographer and academic Adam Ulam, Polish historian Stanislaw Ulam, Polish mathematician Ivan Vakarchuk, Ukrainian physicist, rector of the Lviv National University Lyubomir Viner, historian Hirsch Lauterpacht, 1897-1960, jurist, used the term crimes against humanity to describe nazi atrocities rafael lemkin 1900 to 1959 jurist inventor of the term genocide topic <laughs> chess and gaming alexander Belyovsky, ukrainian chess grandmaster Danilo Ishutin, Ukrainian professional gaming player Vasily Ivanchik, Ukrainian chess grandmaster Katerina Lano, Ukrainian chess grandmaster Anna Muzichuk, Ukrainian chess grandmaster Maria Muzichuk, Ukrainian chess grandmaster Oleg Romanishin, Ukrainian chess grandmaster Andrei Volokhytin Ukrainian chess grandmaster Topic. Actors, singers, and directors Kristina Feldman, Polish actress Leo Fuchs, Jewish actor Solomia Krushelnitska, Ukrainian opera singer Les Kerbas, Ukrainian movie and theater director, actor Paulina Lovitz, Jewish actress Paul Muni, Jewish actor Aleksander Mysuga, Polish opera singer Ruslana, 1973, Ukrainian pop singer Mariana Sadovska, Ukrainian actress, singer, musician, recording artist, composer Svitoslav Vakarchuk, Ukrainian rock musician Gabriela Zapolska, Polish playwright, actress Andrzej Zulawski, Polish film director, writer Painters 
Roman Bezpalkiv (1938–2009), Ukrainian painter. Zefran Kwiklinski, Polish painter who moved and spent most of his life in Zakopana in Poland. Artur Grotger, Polish Romantic painter. Eugenius Geppert, Polish painter. Jaroslava Koral, Ukrainian painter. Witold Manisterski, Ukrainian painter. Tadeusz Reichter, Polish painter. Jan Stajka, Polish painter. Ivan Trush, Ukrainian painter. Topic: Military leaders. Tadeusz Jordan Rozdowski, Polish military leader and one of the founders of modern Poland, buried in Lechakiski Cemetery. Tadeusz Bor Komarowski, Polish military leader. Michal Karaszewicz Tokarzewski, Polish military leader. Adam Epler, Polish military leader. Topic: <laughs> Government officials and politicians. Tadeusz Brzezinski, Polish consular official, father of President Jimmy Carter's national security adviser, Zbigniew Brzezinski. Vyacheslav Chornovil, Ukrainian politician. Agner Romwald Golahovsky, Minister of Interior in the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Governor of Galicia. Mikhailo Ryshevsky, Ukrainian academic, politician. Faina Kirschenbaum, Israeli politician. Jacek Kuran, Polish politician. Ignacy Muskiki, Polish president. Karl Roddick (1885–1939), political activist. Topic: Clergy. Aaron Abba Ben Johanan Ha Levi, Rabbi. Michal Peter Boim, Polish preacher, sinologist, traveler, cartographer, translator, diplomat, philosopher, philologist, botanist, biologist, doctor. Lubomir Husser, major archbishop of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and a cardinal of the Catholic Church. Husafat Kotsilovsky, Ukrainian Greek Catholic bishop and martyr. Roman Lisko, Ukrainian Greek Catholic priest and martyr. Andrei Sheptitsky, Ukrainian philanthropist, benefactor, founder of Lviv National Museum, Metropolitan Archbishop. Joseph Slipe, major archbishop of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and a cardinal of the Catholic Church. Casimir Zeglin, inventor of the bulletproof vest. David Halevi Siegel, D. 1667, author of Teresa Hav. Tzvi Hirsch ben Yaakov Ashkenazi. Kakam Tzvi. D. 1718. Jacob Joshua ben Zevi Hirsch. D. 1756, Offenbach im Main, officiated until 1731. Joshua Fock Ha Cohen Katz ben Alexander. D. 1614, author of Sefer Mirat Enayim. Topic: Sports. Vladislav Baikanov, born 1989, Israeli Olympic short track speed skater. Viktor Chukarin, a Soviet gymnast, he won 11 medals including 7 gold medals at the 1952 and 1956 Summer Olympics, an assistant professor at the Lviv Institute of Physical Culture. Kazimierz Gorski, Polish soccer coach Daniil Ishutin, Dota 2 player Ole Luzhny, Ukrainian former professional soccer player Elena Vesnina, Ukrainian tennis player. Topic: International relations. Topic: Twin towns and sister cities. Topic: 
Topic. See also. List of Leopolitans. Polish football clubs established in Lviv: Pogon Lwów, Zarny Lwów, Lechia Lwów, Hasmonia Lwów. Great Suburb Synagogue.